What is going on, everyone? Welcome back to TTP Sports. And before we get into this Flyers shutout victory, the most important thing you can do is hit that subscribe button. I will greatly appreciate that. So if you are a new viewer to the channel, visiting it for the first time, definitely recommend hitting that sub button if you want to hear all the Philadelphia sports latest news, recaps, and events. And if you are a current subscriber, I do think you're crazy for being here that long, but I'm always grateful for the people that subscribe here. Definitely share it out. Get it out there. Let's grow this channel together get it over the 400 sub count and grow it from there so let's get into the business the flyers shut out the worst team in the nhl currently the arizona coyotes by a score of three to nothing all three flyers goals coming in the third period even though honestly you could argue that it could be four nothing or should be four nothing but we'll get into that a little bit with the uh, disallowed goal that was originally called a goal but for some reason the refs decided to huddle and called it no goal so we'll get into that in a little bit, but Carter Hart gets his first shutout of the season. He stops 29 out of 29 shots faced today from the Arizona Coyotes, but uh, maybe a little complaint from the team today. I know you're coming back off your three-game road trip from Western Canada as your first home game back, but you haven't played in three days, so maybe fatigue should not be settled in. I'm not saying the team looked tired at all. It's that they kind of looked... Maybe lack some energy starting off in the game for a little bit, or just it was just lack of communication, just a little sloppy, and it kind of felt like you were playing down to your opponent early in this game, I would say for the first maybe 15, 20 minutes, honestly, maybe even the first half of the game, because the first period was way too back, back and forth for my liking. Arizona, they spent a lot of time in your offensive zone. Or the uh, the defensive zone, actually. And then the Flyers, they got their chances as well. That third line of JVR, Lawton, and Limblom, they generated a lot of chances in the offensive zone. Oscar Limblom just couldn't buy a goal today. He had so many chances on the one-timer in the first period. He had a chance in the second period to bury a shot. He had a chance in the third period to bury a shot. It was just like, man... They're trying to find this guy for a goal, and he just, for some reason, is getting robbed the entire night. He just can't catch a break. And there was also, I think, a chance in, I, I think it was also the second period or the third period, where he might have had at least four chances to score today. So Limblom just could not catch a break at all. But I also do think the third line was a little bit lazy in the defensive zone. They were getting hemmed in there a lot. And it just felt like the Flyers really didn't have that jump in the game for the first half of it like I said back to back way too much or back and forth way too much in that first period the first half of the second period before the disallowed goal happened was really basically after that was when the Flyers picked up their game the Flyers had the only three power plays of the day and this was their first game with the new look power plays you have Atkinson on the left side Giroux on the right side Provorov now manning the point with Sean Couturier being net front and then you have your second power play unit of Ristolainen, Keith Fiandel, JVR, Faraby, and Broussard. So the power play did ge definitely generate some looks, especially on one of their later power plays in the game with Ristolainen barely missing some chances. He had some really good chances to score in this game as well. Just got very, very close to the narrow of putting the puck into the net. It was just, ugh, man, couldn't catch a break either. He had those chances as well. But the goaltender for Arizona, Kirill Vimilka, hopefully I'm pronouncing that name right, is, uh, he, he was good today, and he's really been the only, I would say, bright spot from Arizona this season, because looking at his record so far this year, he's actually been pretty good, like, basically the record aside, he, in coming into this game now, well, this was coming into the game, I don't think they updated it yet, he is currently 0-5 with seven games played, and, well, 0-5-1 actually, and he has a 2.63 goals against and a 920 save percentage in seven games played. Five of those were starts. So he's been the only bright spot for this Arizona team. The major problem with this team coming into the season, besides their winless record coming in, they can't score goals. I think they were averaging one and a half, maybe even less than one and a half goals a game coming into this. So the good goal scoring and putting the puck in the net has been the major problem for Arizona. But they definitely had some grade-A chances throughout this game where I thought the Flyers were playing a little sloppy on the defensive side, maybe trying to pinch a little too much. But 
They also did get back defensively. Nick Sealer had a couple of nice plays, especially trying to break up a 2-on-1, putting the puck into the corner. Carter Hart as well, making a lot of great saves in this game, but maybe got lucky on some of those as well, especially at the end of the second period, where Arizona got a late chance off of a turnover in the puck at the post and didn't end up going into the net. So... There were chances across the entire board for both teams, but the Flyers managed to score on their chances, especially in that third period. So they win this game by a score of three to nothing. So basically, so going into the second period, because the first period, very back and forth, you had that great chance by Limblum's line. He missed it on the one timer. I'm not sure if Amel. Vimelka made the save, or he just missed the net, so nothing happens there. The Flyers do get one power play in that period. Claude Drew just ringed it off the crossbar, so they were getting some looks on that first unit of the power play. Then going into the second period, basically it felt more of the same, but it did feel like Arizona had the better of the jump, so you're basically looking at it like, oh, the Flyers are going to have this sloppy second period. Once again, the bad second period play is going to continue tonight, but... The Flyers do get a couple of power plays in this second period as well. They get one basically late into the period, and that turns into... Um, I forget basically where the goal happened. I think it was before the power play that the Flyers got late in the second period. So, it was around... So, it, it was just a weird play. It, it was a weird play in general, just a weird situation on how it happened. So you got a net mount scramble. You got, it's the Broussard line out there, Joel Fairby, Derek Broussard, Cam Atkinson. They're battling in front of the net. They get the puck to the goaltender, and it looks like the puck pounces into the crease right to the stick of Cam Atkinson where he's battling with Shane Gosper. Also credit Shane Gosper returned to Philadelphia today. I forgot to bring that up. They had a little nice, you know, uh, welcome back salute for Shane Gosses Bear in his first game back in Philadelphia. But going back to the play at hand, the puck lands on the stick of Cam Atkinson, who has a wide open net, and he buries it. So you think it turns into a one nothing Flyers lead in that standpoint. But when you saw the goal happen, you instantly saw Shane Gosses Bear make a reaction to the referee, and the fact that the referee is pointing goal on the ice right here, and he has a clear view of what was going on. So... Gosses Bear, it, at first it looked like he was complaining for a hand pass because he was signaling something or motioning something with his hand. So during the celebration, they're high five in the bench, the Flyers. You got the refs and the linesmen going to the, the uh, penalty box to discuss. And they're discussing, they're discussing, they're discussing. They're not putting it on the review helmets. They're not going up to Toronto and reviewing anything. There was no challenge on the play either, but the refs break out the huddle. The one ref goes to center ice where he's going to make the announcement of what the hell they were talking about. And then they called the goal back. Basically saying that the goaltender, the puck was frozen under the goaltender's glove. And there was going to be a whistle. There was an intent to blow the whistle. So, basically the call gets reversed. Because if you look on the replay, the puck was under the glove for maybe a millisecond. Then got kicked. Then got bounced out of his glove. And then it went onto the stick of Cam Atkinson. So... Is it the fact that you're blowing your you intended to blowing the whistle because you see the puck the cup the puck is covered, or is it just that well it's it's such a difficult thing to talk about just because the rule is so weird. Because basically the ref a goal cannot count because the ref has the intention of blowing the whistle. When the ref loses sight of the puck, your intention is to blow the whistle and blow the play dead. But the puck was covered for 0.5 seconds. And it was knocked out right immediately. Right, on, right to the stick of Atkinson. So, how do you see the puck covered for that quick of time, then see it pop out in that other quick of time, and you still call it a goal on the ice? And the fact that... Like, I can understand based on the rule. You have the intent to blow the whistle. The puck was covered. So I can understand that. I don't like the way they went about the review. Because they didn't go up to Toronto, there was no challenge on the play, they just decided to huddle and reverse the goal. That's what basically it was. And that's why I did not like that, and I'm sure the Flyers bench didn't like it either. Because, at this point, the Flyers can't challenge that, because I don't think there is a challenge for intention of blowing the whistle or puck being covered. But, it was just a bad way of trying to review it. Just go up to Toronto and get the confirmation. Just don't stand there on the ice and say, oh, yeah, this is what happened. I think this is what happened, blah, 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 blah. Like, go with the Toronto. That's what they're there for. They're there for the reviews. They're there for the challenges. That's what Toronto is there for. So that's why I didn't like that situation. So 
The goal gets reversed, but it does look that the Flyers have a better jump in their game after the call gets reversed because technically the momentum was flowing in the other direction at the time, you know, the quote-unquote goal did happen, but gets reversed, the Flyers are playing much better, and then you get a played late in this second period where you got Riss the line in, Coming up at the ice way late into the second period, he puts the shot on net, then grabs his own rebound, and then just struggles trying to tuck it in past the leg of the goaltender. It looks like it bounced off the side of the net, and somehow this puck did not go in. So it's just like, come on. This team cannot catch a break with the lucky bounces that they're getting in the rebounds. If It feels like there are situations where just like on every Limblom chance that he had today, he felt like he had so many chances to bury it, and he just couldn't. There were power plays, they had chances to bury them, and he just couldn't. Maybe more chances that they should have shot the puck, and they elected not to. They elected to pass the puck. There were a couple situations where JVR did that. They were having an odd man rush up the ice, and were just like, JVR, why the fuck are you passing that? That's basically what it is. Same thing, like the, um... But credit to the fourth line, actually, too, today. The fourth line had a lot of buzz in their game, and it goes all the playing his first game since basically not playing, I would say, the entire road trip since the Edmonton game, so there was a lot of jump in their game, Nicholas Albi kubel having a lot of chances, Tom, they were just generating just momentum in the offensive zone, they were getting the pressure in there, they were getting that four check in, so the fourth line, a lot of credit to them today, so you're still scoreless after two, Carter Hart making some very nice saves, so you're lucky to be tied nothing, nothing, honestly, Carter Hart keeping you in this one, but you did have the better jump of the momentum going into the third period, so we go into this third period, you look a lot better, you're playing like the team who has been playing good th third periods the entire season so far in the first seven to eight games. And the first chance comes very early. A very nice pass from Claude Giroux over the C Travis Konechny cross ice. And it turns into a two-on-one with him and Sean Couturier. Has a nice feed over the Kutu. Buries it into the wide open net. Turns into a one nothing lead. That's Sean Couturier's fourth goal on the season. So... Basically, this one nothing lead goes through the entire third period. Arizona has their chances. Once again, the Flyers, they get a power play in this period as well. They can't finish on that. Ristolainen had a great chance later in that power play as well. The Barry one, he just like, come on, man, you got to bury that. And then once again, Lindblom having another chance where he just had a one-timer and just got robbed by the goaltender. It's just like, come on, Lindblom. I know, like, you cannot catch a break. That's what it felt like the entire goddamn night. But... This goes through the entire third period. Arizona, they get their chances. Carter Hart makes some very nice saves, maybe catching a couple of breaks as well. There was also one, I think, halfway through the third period where I have no idea how Arizona did not bury this puck, but Carter Hart getting over quickly to make the save. So, basically, one nothing through the entirety of the, second, of the third period. You go into basically garbage time with around two and a half, three minutes left of this period. Arizona elects to pull the goaltender. Maybe it was too early because the Flyers jump on that puck going forward. They actually try to dump it into the empty net, but the, but Filmelka gets over to try to maybe tap it with his stick, and I think he actually does prevent it from going in. So, But the Flyers actually get the jump on the forecheck, and it turns into... Justin Braun on the forecheck, surprisingly, and then he turns into a pass to JVR. Then you got Scott Lawton wide open, who buries it 5 hole past Vilmelka, and it becomes a 2 0 Flyers lead. Then you go more into garbage time, around a minute and a half, two minutes left remaining in this game. Arizona elects to pull the goaltender once again, but then the Flyers pounce on it, get a 2 on 1 or 2 on 0 actually with Coots and Claude Giroux. I was just like, Coots, just bury the puck. But no, he was being the friendly guy, giving it over to the captain who buries it, ices the game, makes it a 3 0 lead, and that's how your game will end. Flyers winning this game by a score of 3 0. Three stars of the game Sean Gatori, your first star, Carter Hart, your second star, and Karela Vilmilka with your third star of the game. Shots on goal, 34 to 29 in favor of the Flyers. The Flyers dominated in the faceoff circle. The Flyers were the only team with power plays in this game. They were over three on that. Shot differences in each period. It was tied 13 to 13 in the first, and then 10 to 9 in favor of the Flyers in the second, and 11 to 7 in favor of the Flyers in the third period. Claude Giroux getting a couple of points in this game. Travis Connecting also recorded one point. Then you also got Sean Gatori recording a couple of points as well. So that's very nice to see there. So going into the rest of the week, you get this win over the winless Arizona Coyotes. So you don't 
you are not that first team to give up their first win of the season, which is, thank God, that did not happen. Thank God it did not. So you look at the rest of the schedule going into this week. You got two road games coming up against the Pittsburgh Penguins and the Washington Capitals, your first Metropolitan Division matchups of the season, both of them coming on the road. These are going to be two huge games for Pittsburgh. They're still missing a lot of pieces, but they also got Sidney Crosby back. So we all know how Crosby plays against the Flyers. He's a maniac when it does, or when he does, actually. So that's going to be some big-time competition for them. But Pittsburgh, they're also missing a lot of pieces as well. as They're still missing Rust. They're still missing Latang with the COVID situation. So they have a lot of pieces missing. They're still missing Malkin for at least another month or two. So hopefully the Flyers can pounce on a very banged-up Penguins team. But it doesn't really matter who's missing from that Pittsburgh lineup. They still play hard regardless. And then going into your first matchup on Saturday against the Washington Capitals, Alex Ovechkin has been very fantastic to start the season off already having nine goals to record this year. And he's basically pacing for beating Gretzky's goal record. So that's going to be a tough matchup regardless when you play the Washington Capitals. So the Flyers has some tough things coming up for the end of this week. So looking at the standings to end off this video. So going in the Metropolitan right now. So if this app would load any quicker, because for some reason it is slow as molasses, come on, man. I just want to end the video off for the nice people that are watching. So the Metropolitan Division, look up right now. Literally every team is either at or above 500. Carolina Hurricanes, they are still undefeated. They're 8-0 to start the season. New York Rangers, they are in second, 6-2-1. Washington Capitals in third, 5-1-3. Flyers in fourth at 5-2-1. Columbus Blue Jackets in fifth at 5-3-0. Three, Devils in 6th at 4, 2 and 1. Islanders in 7th at 3, 2 and 2. And the Pittsburgh Penguins are in 8th place at 3, 3 and 2. So, big matchups coming up at the end of this week. And you got a big win today in the trap game against the Arizona Coyotes. So, you found a way to win. Carter Hart gets the shutout. He has been electric so far to start this season. And he looks like he has a lot of his confidence back, which is a really good thing for this season. So... It's going to do it for this video, everyone. What are your thoughts on this game? Your thoughts on Carter Hart, the game in general, Claude Giroux, Sean Couturier. I want to hear all your thoughts down in the comment section below, as always. So don't forget to leave those down there. Do not forget to drop a like on this video. Do not forget to check out the Panda Lines, which I'm a part of. Their links are down in the description below. Also, don't forget to check out the links to Broads Media, the Flyer to Pod merch website, and also Flyers Nitty Gritty. All that good stuff is down in the description below. So don't forget to check those out. And like I said at the beginning of the video, the most important thing you can do is hit that sub button. I'll greatly appreciate that and i will see you next time